What's going on guys? Kaiser here from Kaiser Reveal. And today I'll be showing you how I create some of the effects that I use in my intros using Premiere Pro. Now a couple of you guys have been asking me to do this for a while, but I've been trying to figure out a way to incorporate it into this channel without creating another one. So what I decided to do was just throw it out there and see how you guys respond to it and possibly turn it into a series where I break down one video a month. Now obviously that's going to be dependent on if you guys find any value in it, so leave a comment below. But anyway, the first intro that I'll be breaking down is from the Philips Hue Review video, and here's what that looks like. So that's what we'll be creating today. Now I decided to break this video down into two parts because it ended up being close to 20 minutes. But anyway, with that said, this is my new series, The Breakdown. So there's a ton of different ways to achieve these same effects. Now I won't be going over each method, nor will this be an intro to Premiere type video. So you need to have some basic knowledge of Premiere. The first edit is one clip that I cut into three parts, added some keyframes, and a color mat. The first cut is scaled at 100. The second cut is scaled at 127. And the third cut is scaled at 148. And this creates this kind of growing effect. Now to change the color of Anonymous face, I use a color mat. To do that, you create a new item, choose color mat, click OK. Choose the color that you want to use. For this example, I'll use blue. Click OK. Then drag the mat from the bin and place it on top of the clip. Now because this was just a quick flash, I shortened the color mat. I'll turn off the red color mat so that you can see the blue one. Now select the blue color mat, go to blend mode, choose darken, and that's it. Now to create this in and out effect, I use keyframes instead of cutting the clip this time. So what you want to do is place your playhead where you want your effect to start. Now your first keyframe should be the same scale as your clip. So my clip is currently scaled at 148, so my very first keyframe will be 148. Tapping the right arrow key once will take you to the next frame, and this one is scaled at 188. The next keyframe is scaled to 148, the next is 227, and the last is scaled back to 148. This is what creates that in and out effect, and here's how that sequence looks. All right, the next sequence will be a whip pan effect. This is done with two clips and a blur effect. The top layer is an adjustment layer with a blur effect on it. Here's how the clip looks with the blur turned off. Now you can easily create this pan effect using the push transition found in the effects video transition folder. But because I want you guys to see and understand how keyframes work, I decided to do it this way. Because once you have an understanding of this, you won't be limited to the transition and effects included in Premiere. So what we have here is two clips overlapping each other. The bottom clip is sliding off the screen and the top clip is sliding on the screen. So I'll place my playhead and keyframe here because this is when I want the clip to start sliding off the screen. Then I'll set another keyframe at the end of the clip and change my horizontal position to a point where the clip is off the screen. Then I did the same thing with the top clip except it starts off the screen and then slides on the screen. Now like I said, this isn't the easiest way of doing this, but I wanted you guys to see how you can use keyframes to achieve these effects. So back to the blur. To do this, you just create an adjustment layer, drag it onto your timeline. Go to the Effects tab and search Directional Blur. Drag the Directional Blur onto the Adjustment layer. Now I turn off the current blur effect so that you guys can see how I created it. So with the new Adjustment layer selected, place your playhead in the middle of the Adjustment layer. From here we want to set keyframes. We'll set the Blur Link to 286. Set the Directional Blur to 90 degrees and set the keyframe. Next we'll move to the beginning of the adjustment layer, change the blur length to zero, and set a keyframe. 
Now you won't see the blur effect until the blur link starts to change. So the blur link will start at zero and gradually increase from one keyframe to the next until it reaches 286. Now we want the blur to fade in and then back out. So we'll set another keyframe at the end of the blur layer and set it back to zero. Here's how it looks. The next sequence of effects are simply flashes and jitters. Now the black flashes are simply color mats, but you can also achieve this by cutting the clip. To add the color mat, simply click new item, choose color mat, choose the color that you want it to flash. I'm using black. Then drag the color mat over your clip and scale it to the desired length. The longer the length, the longer the flash will be. Here I'm using two color mats. So this basically creates a quick flash of black or either a blinking effect, depending on how you look at it. The next effect is simply a scale. Now the clip on top is the same as the one underneath it. I don't remember why I duplicated it because I really didn't have to. All you do is cut it where you want the scale to occur. Now I could have just selected the cut and changed the scale, but for whatever reason I duplicated it by holding the Option key on a Mac and dragging up, or the Alt key on a PC. Now I'll turn off the already scaled clip so that you can see that nothing happens. So all you do is select the clip and change the scale. Now when I play it back, you'll see the quick scale in and out. The next effect is the jitter. Now just like before, I duplicated the layer below and cut the clip at the point where I wanted the jitter to occur. Now to create this effect, all I did was add a directional blur to the duplicated clip. So just like earlier, you simply go to effects, find directional blur, drag it onto the clip, then change the blur link to whatever you want. I use 17. So what happens is the clip is normal, then it hits the duplicated clip with the blur effect on it, and it gives you the impression that it's moving, because that's pretty much how motion blur look. All right, so I'm gonna end this video here, but leave a comment below let me know if you guys want me to continue with this series. And if so, I'll upload part two and also break down some of my other intros. As always, if you guys enjoy this content, be sure to like and subscribe. So until next time, peace.